Good evening. We welcome all of you to our memorial service here at St. Francis Medical Center Healthcare System. And thank you for being here this evening. Most of all, we want to thank you for the families who represented the patients who have passed away this last year in hospice. And we want to show our support to you this evening through this memorial service as we celebrate their lives together. Also, we'd like to acknowledge the staff of St. Francis Hospice and for the wonderful job they have done through their hard work and labor and love. We certainly appreciate all that you have done for our patients. I want to also thank the pastoral care staff, of which I am a part. Thanks to Jim Lawrence, the Director of Mission, to Chaplain Jim Schultz, to Father Patrick, to Chaplain Fred Bergard, Chaplain for Hospice, and my name is Greg Heinzman. I'm one of the chaplains here, and it's the opportunity and the privilege of mine to share a message with you, and we thank you for being here, and also thank you for Fred for guiding us in music this evening. My prayer for all of us tonight is that this will be a time of healing, a time where we experience God's healing touch, the uplifting of our spirits through the music, through the words of encouragement, and the hope that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And through the scriptures and message, may we have hope and may we walk this journey as God continues to lead us and guide us by His Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to begin our service tonight by remembering the names of those who have passed this past year. And it's a long list and uh, just shows how much we have done and how much we care for all the ones who have died. Dolly Achenbach. Jerome Adams. Joe Anders, Richard Baker, Charles Bassano, Lyndall Barks, Donald Beard, Teresa Bell, Julius Easter, Betty Bifengani, Lillian Lusewich, Bonnie Bradshaw, Muriel Buchanan, Hilda Busink, Patrick Burford, Barbara Campbell, Mary Cannon, James Cantrell, Madeline Chandler, Joseph Childress, John Christopher, Betty Coleman, Cloyd Cook, Ruby Cook, Charles Cox, Joan Dom, Lucy DeFazio, William Bill Dawkins, Lorna Dreyer, Rose Dreyer, Ira Dykes, June Eastwood, Arthur Eldridge, Luella Elfrink, Hubert Ellis, Kevin Esner, James Fakes, Margaret Farrow, Robert Fieser, Sherry Fraction, Melba Fulbright, Robert Gaines, Bradley Gammon, Marina Georgia, Barbara Gerber, Betty Burlock, Sandra Gibson, Anna Glick, Carol Golden, Clarence Grieben, Robert Grissom, Wilma Grossheider, Randy Grubbs, Donald Hanscom, Marvin Hansen, Randy Hensey, Jack Heron, Karen Hicks, Donald Hicks, Freda Hogan, Dusty Houston, Bonita Huffman, Robert Huey, Henry Norman Hume, 
Ivan Humphreys, Perry Hutchison, Ruth Illers, Mary James, Milton James, Mary Jones, Lawrence Kinkle, Louis Kimes, Louis King, Carol <coughs> Kircher, Joseph Kleesner, Earl Koenig, Roger Lane, Lola Layton, Gary Leonard, Barbara Lewis, Trevo Woffery, Susan Laughlin, Ronald Majowski, James Martin, Annis McCarley, Shirley McClellan, Wilma McCormick, <coughs> Glenn McCoy, Hester McCarthy, Clyde McDonald, Charles McGill, Lloyd Mickelson, Curtis Miller, John Mills, Sandra Morrison, Jerry Moser, Peggy Murray, Dorothy Myers, Marilyn Needham, Mary Neumeyer, Raymond Nunnery, Christopher Nussbaum, Walter Oberman, Doris Owens, James Petty, Claude Ann Phillips, John Piper, Nancy Ponder, Shirley Pratty, Leon Crawford, Constance Record, Trula Richard, Edward Rector, Marjorie Risha, Raymond Ritter, Mary Roberts, Valetta Robinson, Laverne Rosenquist, Eleanor Roth, Carol Ruling, Harold Reisler, Lester Ruppel, James Sadler, Mary Sanders, George Schleiter, Jerry Schleigel, Gerald Schlitt, Sarah Schulte, Wanda Schwartz, Joseph Seebeck, Flossie Shaw, Jack Sherwin, Robert, Robert Shai, Jeffrey Sides, Thomas Simpson, James Slinker, Ronald Smith, James Susley, Patricia, Patricia Spalding, Donna Springer, John Stanfield, Pamela Stillwell, Dortha Strack, Berna Sewer, Freddie Swindle, Carl Talley, Clyde Tatum, Phyllis Trankler, Viola Trankler, Gary Tucker, Thomas Van Dieven, Brent Weatherman, Helen <coughs> Walter, Rose White, Franklin Weitzel, Rosalie Weisler, Leonard Willie, Martha Wilton, Clinton Wren, Scott Wright, William Count. May all of their souls rest in peace. Amen. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we will see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore just sing on that beautiful shore. Amen. All the songs of the blessed, and our spirits shall sorrow no more. Not a sigh for the last scene of rest. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on. In the sweet by and by, we shall be on that 
says that we should not mourn like those who have no hope, but our hope is in Christ, so we can stand firm. So Father, we give you thanks for this night, and we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. I want to do a couple songs for you that you may know, and this one is Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. He who watches over you will not slumber. 
Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Reading from Revelation chapter 20, 21, verse 1 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and earth had passed away, but there was no longer any sea. I saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Prepare, prepare as a bride beautiful dress for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the, for the old order of things has passed away. He who has seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. And then from the book of John, chapter 14, verse 1 through 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, what I have told you, that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be there where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how, we, how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Thanks be to God for the reading of his holy scripture. Amen. The writer of John's Gospel, a book who was written around 90 AD, 60 years after the life of Jesus, John is reflecting back on the life of Jesus, offering these comforting words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For there are many rooms in my Father's house, and I am preparing a place for you. In God's presence, there is a place of peace, a place of safety, a place which we can pour our hearts out to God, where we can experience God's presence, both in this life and in the life thereafter. As you think about peace, as you think about trust, Think about those peaceful places that you have gone with your loved one and those places that you enjoyed that brought special memories in your life. It may be going to a campground. It may be going on the lake. It may be going on a bike ride. It could be a fest favorite restaurant. Or maybe you recall going to that special place where they were buried. Whatever it is, we have those special places in our hearts that can never be taken away from us. And God gives us that hope that the memory of us will last forever. It is through these words that God offers us encouragement and hope. There's a story that I'd like to share with you. It's, it comes from the book, May I Walk Home With You by Joyce Rupp. And it's a story where the room is not yet ready. It's a book written for those on a hospice journey at the end of life. And God was still preparing the room, so to speak. Billy was an elderly man who came to hospice facility from the hospital. He was very ill, alert, and talkative. He loved to visit with the staff and was able to do any of his self-care and relied upon the nurses to help him 
on his journey. When he was there, he would talk to them about his life. He shared some fairly spicy stories. Sometimes we would even hear those. But he had a very colorful life. Sometimes he would get irritable and gruff. Sometimes he would snap at the staff. At first, it seemed that he was hard to the core. But as the more that they learned to get to know him, the more they found out he was a marshmallow on the inside. He was a lonely man who wanted just to have people in his life who cared for him. As his condition got worse and his dying became more imminent, he became extremely restless. And Joyce tells how she went to spend some time with Bill, sat down with him, put her hands on his shoulder and arm. He had not spoken for a few days and was not alert. He wasn't sure that she was maybe even there, but she wanted to sit there and be there present with him. She said to him, what is the matter, Bill? Can you tell me what is bothering you? After a time, he said, they won't open the gates. He came even more agitated and repeated it. They won't open the gates. I sat thinking about that, she said, for a while, wondering what it would mean. Then the thought came to me. I told Bill that I would like to have him listen to me if I could just share a few things. I held his hand. I stroked his brow to assure him of my loving presence. I talked softly into his ear and said, Bill, maybe it is not time for the gate to open yet. It will open when it's time. But for now, you need to be here with us. Just let us love you. Let us care for you. Then when the journey is done, the gate will open and your God will be there for you. Tear ran down Bill's cheeks and he learned to become calm. There is nothing you need to do. A place is all better, already being prepared for you, and the gate will open when it is time. Bill relaxed, became more calm, and sat quietly. And after a while, she says, I repeated, just be present in a moment, Bill. We are going to be with you on your journey, and we will walk with you there. We will not leave you. Then the gate will open when it is time. It isn't time quite yet. He became very calm, dropped off to sleep, and then died a few days later. What a wonderful experience of being someone, being with someone who is dying and having that opportunity to spend those last moments with them. She shares this meditation, says, Divine Gatekeeper, you alone know the time when my loved one will depart from this side of life. You wait at the gate of eternal life, <clears throat> excuse me, assuring each of us that there is nothing to fear. <coughs> excuse me. Your everlasting kindness fills the gate open and promises us peace. We cannot hurry the journey. We cannot stop the journey. What a wonderful story of being with someone towards the end, and showing compassion to them. Revelation talks about the new Jerusalem coming out down from heaven as a place adorned for a husband as the bride of Christ, and staying with us that behold the dwelling of God is with men. It talks about that there will be no more tears, no more pain, no more agony in this life. Sometimes in this life we do go through tough times, but God is with us. And I believe it's those special moments that God brings to our lives that show us that he is with us. I'd like to share with you one more story that's called Trails, Trailing Clouds of Glory from Chicken Soup for the Grieving Soul. It's really about a really unique experience. It's more of a mystical experience. I don't know if you've ever had any mystical experiences. I actually have myself recall 
uh, being awakened when one of my loved ones passed away and being in prayer another time when one of my loved ones passed away. And so this story spoke to me and I really hope that it speaks to you. It says, it's written by Paul Wood and it's called Chicken Soup for the, from Chicken Soup for the Grieving Soul. And here's the story. Death has many secrets and I know a few of them. However, I've been given a story to tell about a time when the thick veil of mystery tore open and then closed up again. It happened after a month after my 30th birthday. The school year had ended. I finished up grade reports for my students. The house was a mess and my suitcase was half packed. In two days, I'd fly to California. My father had been sick for months and his voice over the phone had been pounding weaker and weaker. Good thing I'd be seeing him soon. Then that night, some time before dawn, without moving a finger or twitching an eyelid, I suddenly rose up out of a deep sleep. That is, I was wakeful, but not awake. It's hard to explain. I simply found myself somewhere talking with someone, someone big and wonderful. I didn't know who it was at first. I just felt warmth and love, safety and peace. Then I heard a big voice say, hello, I've missed you, and I love you. The counter lasts several minutes, and the emotions are still vivid to this day. Then I sleep back to sleep, and I woke in the morning sunlight. The alarm had not sounded, my electric clock had stopped. The very moment of mechanical failure was obvious. It was a quarter to three. The clock had locked it in the tracks. About an hour later, the phone call came. It was my mother. My dad had died early that morning. The news hit me like an explosion. After the initial shock, I realized what had happened. I turned to look at that clock again. It had stopped exactly at the same moment that my dad had died. My father had stopped to visit me on the way out of this dimension. For the first time in my life, I experienced what is called a revelation of the night, a bridge from this world to the next. In the context of ordinary dreams, I always considered emotion to be sentimental and vague, but what I experienced was no ordinary dream. It was a moving moment for me. He said, I'm happy. What a relief to release from that body, to range so freely to grow so wide. I can say much more. There's only a moment to check in, but wow, just look at me, He's, his loved one said. I didn't think about my dad after this. I knew he was experiencing something about death, something big. And he made a point to stop by and to share it with me. Later, when I got home that night, I saw the iron socks and textured toilet seat with my father. Parting memo, the cheap little plastic clock was sitting under the bed. But the fact of the matter was, it just didn't work. Now, instead of a sacred relic, the clock appeared to someone like a piece of junk. But for me, it was an important memory of my father. My eyebrows went up in astonishment as I thought about that clock and that relic and what it meant to me. It showed me how God was with me, how God intervened, and God spoke to me about my loved one to show me his love and how much he loved me. Did you think about your loved one? May you experience God's peace. May you Realize that that loved one of yours is a special place in God's presence. And we will always remember who they are and what they mean to us. And as we carry on the memory of them, may God continue to carry us on the journey of life as we continue to heal. And may we experience God's peace, both now and forevermore.
I'm down and my soul is weary. Troubles come and my heart hurts you. Then I'm still and wait here in the silence until you come and settle out of me. You raise me up. So I can stand alone. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. And I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. Raise me up to walk on stormy seas. And I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. Thank you so much for coming to our service tonight, and I pray that it was a time of healing, reflection, and source of strength for you. Before I offer the blessing, I want to invite all of you to come and join us for a time of refreshments. You just turn down to the left, and there will be a place for uh, coffee, tea, and cookies, and just the importance of good Christian fellowship. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you this day. And may the Lord be gracious.